Photoshop libraries are awesome, and today I'm going to show you why. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm excited about this episode. I want to really show you how Photoshop libraries can really help you to speed up your workflow, especially when you're working with adjustment layers. By the way, I'm working with the latest update of Photoshop. This is version 22.5.1, just in case you're wondering. And as you can see, I have my library module opened up here. If yours isn't opened up, just come up the window and make sure you have libraries checked on. Okay, that's very important or you won't see the icon. So just, you know, open up that icon and that'll take you to your libraries. Right now I have this folder called adjustments opened up, but you see right here, this arrow, just click on this and this will take you back to all your different libraries. Okay, to create a new library, all you have to do is click this plus and then just simply give your uh, new library a name. Now, I've already named my library uh, Adjustments, so I won't add a new library. I'm just going to simply cancel out of this. And as you see here, there's my Adjustment Library. Now, these are the recent libraries that you've worked with, and down here are all your libraries. Okay, so I'm just going to click on Adjustments, and that'll open up my Adjustments Library. Inside this adjustments library, you'll notice I have uh, three different groups, one called black and white, one color grading, and one called LUTs. And then I have a section here called not grouped. And I'm going to show you how you can put things in groups. Groups are a great way of keeping things organized. Let me go ahead and take these two adjustments, medium contrast and slight contrast. I'm going to select both. I'm going to click the first one and command or control click the second one. They're both selected and you see this folder icon, give it a click and then just name your group. I'm going to call this contrast because I'm going to put contrast adjustments in here. Okay, so now it's called contrast, and you'll notice I have medium contrast and slight contrast. But I would like slight contrast to be on top, so if I click this and drag it, I can drag it up and put it above there. So now I have slight contrast and medium contrast. So things that are in groups can be rearranged just by dragging them around, which is really nice. I haven't showed you yet how to use these, but first off, let me make an adjustment, and I'm going to show you how to put the adjustment in the group, and then I'll show you how we can use it. Right now, I have a slight contrast adjustment, a medium. So how about we make a strong contrast adjustment? So what I'm going to do is just come to my adjustment layers and grab a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to simply make a strong curves adjustment here, a contrast adjustment. Okay, maybe something like this, a very, a very strong adjustment. Now here's a tip for you. Go ahead and rename this curves one to... Uh, strong contrast. I recommend that you really rename your adjustments before you drag them into your library because it, it helps you keep things organized. You can rename things after you get them into library, but I find it's easier to just rename them first. Now, all I need to do is click this, left click with my mouse and hold that down and drag it into this contrast group. Now I can, you see how I can move it anywhere and position it anywhere I want inside this group. But it's strong, so I'm going to place it under medium. And just like that, it is in there. That was simple, right? Now, how do I use these adjustments? Well, let me show you. Let's get rid of this adjustment first. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. And let's say I want to grab a contrast adjustment from my libraries panel. Okay, so make sure your libraries panel is open. If it's not, open it. And it's going to be inside this group called contrast. And say I want to add a medium contrast to this. One way I can do it is make sure I'm hovering over medium contrast, right click and click on place layers. And it adds a curves adjustment with a medium contrast setting on it, as you can see right there in the curve. So here is the before and here is the after. That's one way of doing it. Let me go ahead and delete this layer and I'll show you another way. The other way of doing it is to hold your alt or option key down. And keep holding it down and drag any one of these adjustments on top of the previous layer. And it adds it that way as well. So here's the before and here's the after. So there's my curves adjustment. And if I felt that was too strong, I can shut this eye off. And let me just hold my alt key down and drag slight contrast above that layer. And now here's a slight contrast adjustment before and after. But can you see the power here? Now that just doesn't work for curves. You can bring any one of these adjustments over here. Color balance adjustments, gradient maps, whatever you want 
can be saved in libraries. And that will really speed up your workflow. And I'll show you some more examples here. I love color grading my images and lookup tables are great for doing that. So let's come and add a lookup table adjustment or a color lookup. So click this. And do you ever have a hard time remembering a favorite lookup table that you really like? For instance, if you have a lookup table that you like in here, like say for instance, you say, you know what? I really like this Kodak 5205 Fuji 3510 lookup table and I click it and that's the look I get. So here's the before that lookup table and here's the after that lookup table. So what I can do is I can come here and rename this lookup table to Kodak. Let's just call it Kodak. 5205, but I could name it the entire name if I wanted to, but just for time, I'm going to name it 5205. All right. So now I already have a group here called LUTs. So I can take this lookup table, Kodak 5205, one of my favorites, drag it down into this LUT group. Let's just place it at the end here. All right. And now let me delete this. And you know what? If I say I really want to use one of my favorite uh, Kodak lookup tables, but when I open up my adjustments and go to color lookups, and I'm saying, you know, gosh, I got all these different Kodaks. Which one was it? Not a problem. Let me go ahead and delete this. And all I need to do is open up my libraries uh, panel and come to LUTs and say, there it is, Kodak. So I can hold my Option or Alt key down, drag it up above my last layer and voila, there it is. There's that Kodak lookup table that I like. Can you see the possibilities here? Now let's say I wanna see what this looks like in black and white. And I really like to make black and white conversions with gradient maps, one of my favorite ways of doing it. So let's come to adjustments here, adjustment layers and click on gradient map and make sure you select a black and white gradient, which is like I have here. Now you can come to the drop down and you can get different gradients whatever you want, you know, you can do colors and so on and so forth, but I'm just doing a basic black to white gradient because it gives you really nice high contrast looks, okay? And you know, this may be something I use all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, BW gradient map. And let's go ahead and save it. Now I already have a group here called black and white, so I can uh, just click and drag this into my group like this and there it is black and white gradient map so whenever i need it all i need to do is open up my libraries and again i could either uh, hold my alt or option key down and drag this up over the top of this layer or else i can just right click this and say place layers and voila there it is there's my black and white gradient map conversion but it's it's easy for me to find because it's inside of my black and whites. But then I have another uh, black and white adjustment inside of here called black and white faded, one of my favorites. And so let me shut this layer off and I might say, I want to see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and right click this and say place layers and see what that looks like. And you'll notice in here, I have a group with a bunch of different adjustments in it, giving me this black and white faded look. Okay. And you can also save a a group of adjustments and put it inside of libraries too. I'll show you how to do that next. Now here's something very important. These are adjustment layers, right? So I can come to any one of these. For instance, if I come to the black and white adjustment layer, come here, I can come here and alter, you know, work with my reds if I want to, work with my yellows. I can do anything I want. So I don't have to keep these adjustments just because I save this out as a, as, as a look, let's say, for instance, inside of this library. I still could come and alter things if I want to. For instance, I can come to curves and give myself a little more contrast if I want or whatever I want to do or pull up my highlights a little bit more. It's endless what you can do here. So just because you've used one of these adjustments doesn't mean you can't alter them or change them. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these adjustments. So I'm going to click on the black and white faded group and hold my shift key down and click on medium contrast. That selects everything and click on my trash can. All the adjustments are gone. Now I'll show you how to save a group of adjustments into the libraries. And to do that, I'm gonna use this infinite color panel. I use this panel to color grade a lot. It's really good. I'll do a video on it someday. I've done one in the past, but I'll do another updated video. But let's go ahead and I'll just click create. 
This is not a tutorial about how to do this, but let me say I click create and I really like that. But you'll notice there's a group here called infinite color and there's a bunch of adjustments in here. There's a lookup table, gradient map, selective color adjustment, color balance and curves. It's really cool. It's really elaborate. But you know what? I might say I really like this look and I'd really like to save it. So what I can do is I'm going to double click infinite color and I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this warm, cool. I'll call it IC for infinite color. So I've renamed it Warm Cool IC. Now let's open up my libraries panel here and that's gonna be a color grade. So I'm gonna put it in this color grading group here. So I'm just gonna grab this, left click this whole group and drag it down into color grading. And there it is. Now let me go ahead and delete this whole group here. I'm just gonna make sure I have that group selected, click on the trash can, and yes, I want the group and contents to go away. So now, if I wanna apply that color grade to this image, uh, just open up libraries and make sure you're under color grading, and there's the, um, the look I wanna apply to it. So I'm just going to hold my option key down and drag this up above here, and now you can see warm, cool, I see for infinite color, and there's the group. Now I could come in here and I could go ahead in, um, let's say for instance, uh, color balance. I can open up color balance and change this a little bit if I want to. You know, maybe cool it down a little bit more. Whatever I need to do to it. So all these controls, you can go ahead and adjust. You can change the gradient map. You can adjust the curves adjustment here. Whatever you want to do. Say I want to just lighten it up a little bit in the midtones, I can do that or darken the midtones down a little bit, whatever you want to do, it's totally up to you. But yes, you can save groups inside of libraries, which is very powerful. The other cool thing about libraries, it's a creative cloud feature. So you can use this on several different computers working with Photoshop and those libraries are available to you. So that is really a great added bonus. Well, there it is, everyone. Photoshop libraries, they can really help you to speed up your workflow, so give them a try. Hey, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, Happy editing.